Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Omid, uh, for the introduction. So, as Dr. Omid mentioned, uh, that we uh, do this very regularly. And today I'm going to uh, go through the uh, TG263. It's a very technical report, so I will do my best to make it uh, simple, digestive, and easy to understand. Uh, there is a lot of concepts in this report uh, which need a lot of concentration. Uh, so, please bear with me and I will. As I said, I try my best to make it as simple as I could. If you can, please uh, just uh, leave the questions to the end of the presentation. Uh, so things will be uh, going in, in a smooth way. Because maybe you'll ask me something now and I will be discussing it uh, in the next uh, slide. Okay. Um, uh, do you see my screen? I hope. Yes, okay. So, what is TG263? TG263 is the largest ever author list uh, uh, for task group published in the Red Journal. And you can see a huge list of uh, uh, participants in this group. And it's composed of a diverse international group, 57 st uh, stakeholders, hospital-based physicists, 33, physician, 15, vendor representative, 8, and one dosimetrist. And it consists of the major organizations, ABM, Astro, all these uh, people are there. And uh, it's a multi-institutional and multi-countries. Uh, it has people from USA, it has people from Canada, it has people from Netherlands. So it's really very huge uh, work. So. What is TG263 TG again? It's a provide nomenclature guidelines in the radiation oncology for the use in clinical trials, data pooling initiatives, uh, population-based studies, and routine clinical care by standardizing. Structure name across image processing and treatment planning system, platforms, nomenclature for dosimetric data, example dose, volume, histogram, and so on, and templates for clinical trials, groups, and users for initial submit of software platforms to facilitate adoption of the standards. It's a formalism of the nomenclature schema, which can accommodate the addition of other structures defined in the future. Maybe in the future we'll have more in the planning system, we'll have other things need to be defined. So this standardization is putting the base uh, for that. So we can adopt whatever naming will be coming in the future. Do we have problem? Uh, are we using, uh, organizing our data that we care about, about into rows so we can, uh, let's say, automate harvesting uh, them later? As you can see here, uh, okay, yes. So this face is really a very uh, sad face because he cannot really go through these uh, huge amount of data. This one's kind of confused. He could detract, but there's still, you know, some missing data here and there. And this person is very happy because the data is kind of going through rows. So he can easily digest these data and he can automate them. Need clarity in communication among the team members plus the system, target, non-target, those volume histogram matrices. Most of the information that we need is here in this graph. It's in the uh, DVH. And there's a lot of information there and all of these information are stored in our um, treatment blank system. Inspect your own data, you will see variation over time. Treatment planners, physicians, treatment blank systems, if you have more than uh, one treatment blank system, let's say if you have Monaco and you have Eclipse, you have other blank systems, you will see a big variation between these systems. I'm giving an example here for one lung patient, uh, one patient for lung case, and you can see patient number one, patient number two, and patient number three, and you see variation in the namings of the structures. So this is among one institution, there is this variation. What if we expand this and we make it multi-institution? You will see huge variation at that point. So we have clinical ambiguity, target structure confusion, communication of intent, roles, Imaging advances those summaries plans for other clinics. Reporting ambiguity, and this is also very important because you need to report your work. 
what you have done in your clinic how many patients have you treated what what uh, type of dose you have you've been giving what type of protocol you are uh, following and so on so radonc has a great database but it has a poor sorting historical comparison if you, i would like to go let's say three years or four years back and see what i have been done let's say i'm using uh, r2eg protocol 001 and now after the updates after five years or ten years i'm now using r2eg uh, 007 so can I go back and see what I have done in seven years back or I cannot? And what can I do in the future? This is also very important. Ask yourself a question about your own data. So they did this study among 16 institutions and they seen a huge variation in naming. Let's take an example. Let's say the left lung. And number of institutions, 12 institutions, you see left lung, lung underscore L, lung capital underscore L, lung small L, L underscore lung, and so on. And this is only for one organ. If you go to the optic nerve, you will see a huge variation. You go to the both lungs and so on and so on. So why we need the TG263? There are two, um, goals, long-term goal and uh, short-term goal. For the short-term goal, clinical speed and consistency, plan review faster, more systematic historical comparison, scripting becomes easier and this is very important because nowadays you don't need to catch up your DVH and you start to grab each organ by organ and okay I need to evaluate let's say uh, this organ, how many how much dose being delivered to that organ and so on. It's, it's become a tedious work that you do it, let's say, point by point. By the use of computer, you can use the automation process or the scripting. Easily, you can grab this information from your data. Missing organs, uh, check example, maybe some plan, the physician, uh, maybe he forgot to draw a certain organ. And then in the plan review, oh, I, maybe I did not draw the spinal cord, or I, I, maybe I did not draw the uh, optic chasm or optic nerve, whatever. So this is easy. With this, you can easily track what type of organs are missed. You can define what type of protocols that you are using. Because everybody now like to go for a standard. They would like their reputation to be, you know, one among the top uh, institution in the world and so on. So you should be following certain protocols because maybe later on you would like to participate in clinical trials and clinical trials require to require you to have certain standard protocols applied at your institution clinical improvement projects for the uh, long-term goals um, for the big data and machine learning and now this became a very hot topic uh, that everybody would like to engage in the machine learning so you leave the computer do the work for you but to make this you need to feed the computer with a huge amount of data the more data you give to the, to the computer the more you are uh, coming to, toward the true value or the correct uh, let's say prediction for your system uh, quantac data sharing programs this is also very important statistical power issues biomakers machine learning target and contours work well on large database so you can leave the computer do the contouring for you. This can be easily done if you have enough amount of data um, classified in the proper uh, way. Data mining, scripting, programming, bull data collection, and help large scale efforts for, uh, by forming the foundations. History and challenges. There is a lot of challenges in this report. They start with the vendor challenges because we have different TBSs. So different vendors, they had different way of, you know, um, programming things, different way of uh, prioritizing things in their uh, software and everyone would like to, his software to be the best. So the length of the names, we are limited with the number of the characters that we use in the uh, TBS. You cannot use an, uh, infinite numbers or infinite number of characters. There should be some limitations. Capitalization. In some system, it's not allowed. Like if you are using a Linux-based or Unix-based system, it's uh, um, uh, word sensitive. So if you, if you use capital C, it's different from small c. So you have to make sure about this. Special type of characters. 
present names in their modules. Lack of direction, no clear multi-institution oversight group, variation even in naming between R2G protocols. If you go to the R2G protocols, you will see there's a huge variation even between the R2G studies itself. Variation in laterality, example, left, right, you use LT or you use RT for left and right, or use only L or only R, capital L or small L, L and so on. Derived and planning structures, how to incorporate new elements. If you have, let's say, tomorrow or maybe after uh, one year or something, new things coming in your TBS, how you can name these things? Under which category these things should be? How you should, uh, let's say, encompass these in, in your TBS and so on. For DICOM uh, targets also, the ICRU, IC, uh, sorry, ICRU defined certain ta targets like GTV, CTV, BTV, ITV, and so on. The structures, previous publications in RG, uh, naming. Uh, NRG is a uh, non-profit research organization that deals with the uh, namings. And uh, you have the FMA. FMA is the uh, uh, federal uh, open source for autology number coding schema. And I'm giving you the uh, uh, website so you can easily go there. They are great, but they have some issues with the radiation oncology specifics they have some problems in defining the things that relates to the uh, radiation ecology. And I will show this in a couple of slides after I talk about this moment. So this is the illustration of the foundation uh, model of the anatomy uh, ontology, which is applied for uh, lung volumes. They focus on the ontology is defining concepts and, uh, and relationship in format consumable by program used in machine learning. The ontology is widely used in informatics, but omits some concepts used in routine clinical care and does not address practical clinical issues for target and non-target uh, structures that are addressed by the task group recommendations. Where there are common structures, the task group nomenclature identifies the ID for the corresponding FMA structure. And each target has a unified code in the TBS depending on the FMA ontology. So it's like a unicode. So let's say the left lung, it has the code 005, let's say, and the right lung have the code 007 and so on. So for the rest of the body. SNOMED, this is the systemized, uh, systemized uh, nomenclature of uh, medicine clinical terms. Uh, this is formed from the UK. It's a framework for defining healthcare uh, concept and interrelationships. Linkage can vary compl uh, complicated and go well beyond the physical anatomy. Each concept is associated with a unique numerical code. It's exactly as if M8. It's the same, but this one is UK and this one is uh, USA. Useful for linking AMR going forward, equivalent SNOMED code may be derived from the thoracic that maintain mapping between terminologies. And this is the illustration of the SNOMED CT, as we see in the FMA 8, exactly the same. Both SNOMED and CT do not meet the requirement for uh, uh, anatomic and non-anatomic and target structure concept, and the necessarily uh, uh, compatibility with vendor system to enable a practical uh, clinical use. DICOM. I think everyone knows what's DICOM, which is the key technology standard in radiation ecology that, that enables data transfer for both clinical and research efforts. It's also the same. It's a Unicode system. It has code for each uh, um, uh, object in it, and I will show this in the uh, next slide. Let's say for the uh, ROI, region of interest name, it has the code 30060020, which, and it consists of 64 characters. Uh, Roy interrupter, which is the person who performing the uh, interpretation, example, physician who did the contour, contours. Roy interpreted type, what type of contour is that? Uh, Roy observation label, like record of the reference images and so on. Not an ontology, it's, it's not an ontology like the FMA and SNOMED, but it gives you information about what type of objects that you are using in your system. Mostly uh, synthetic, standard for transfer and store the information. And this is the uh, table for the DICOM. Let's say for the avoidance structures, they have some 
coat, bolus, cavity, contrast agent, CTV, external, GTV, CTV, and so on. And this is the uh, uh, character coding that's used in the uh, uh, DICOM. Underscore, hash, caret, plus sign, equal sign, and so on. And these are incompatible characters. So if you, in some systems, if you use these, the system will crash. It will not work. So this is the R they allowed. In other systems, it's allowed. Like in, uh, let's say, in Eclipse, you can use the AND. It's allowed. But in other systems, you cannot use. In some systems, you cannot use the dot. You have to, to write the name dot D-O-T instead of dot if you would like to use the dot uh, sample in your uh, naming prescription. Recommendations for non-target structures. Now we go deeper in the uh, protocol. This is, was just a brief history. We started from the beginning, what they are, uh, the, the multi-institution uh, participation, the DICOM format, SNOMED, FMA. Now what they recommend, non-target structures, which is anything beside GTV, CTV, and so on. So the guiding principle, 16 character or, or fewer. You should not exceed 16 characters. So this is your maximum or cutoff value. Compatibility with nearly all systems. And this is compatible with every system, more or less. Unique names independent of capitalization. So you can use capital L or small L. It should give the same meaning in the system. It doesn't give you something else. Plurality of compound structures giving with an S or I. Example, lungs, hypocombi. So anything that ends with S or I, and you would like to make a plural, so you just say hypocombi and lungs and so on. First letter of each structure category is capitalized, and you use the camel case. This is in the programming. We use the camel case. The first uh, word, the first letter of each word is capitalized with no spaces. Example, femur head and no spaces. For the uh, underscore, to separate categorization, example, bowel, bag. PRV, which is the planning uh, risk, uh, planning organ at risk volume, following the main structure. So this is how we name it. Example, brainstem underscore PRV03. This one means 03, these last two digits, they are in millimeters. And they define how you are expansion from your, let's say, your brainstem. So for this example, I'm using brainstem, I'm using a PRV, uh, planning organ at risk volume, three millimeters from the brainstem itself. And as I said, it is in millimeter. Partial structure are designated by tilde, after the root, example, brain. Partial structure, if you are, let's say, doing a scanning and you did not scan the whole organ for whatever reason, you should not use the uh, definite name. I mean, you should not use only brain. You should use brain with tilde at the, at the end. This gives an indication for the person that this organ is not fully um, scanned uh, or, uh, or, or contoured. You are only using it for uh, demonstration purposes, just to show that, okay, this is the brain or this is the lung or this is the kidney, whatever the organ is. It's useful for barrel structure, not used in those evaluation. So it's not used in those evaluation. Custom qualifier, string at the end. Anything you add as a custom, whatever terminology we'd like. Maybe tomorrow I would like to put my name in certain BTV. So I use this terminology at the end of that. BTV, Bilal, and at the end I put this. I should be clear. So someone else will come, okay. So this BTV is only related to that person. So it's customized. It's not something in the system. Uh, standard category root are used, structure distributed throughout the body. A for artery, V for vein, LN for lymph node, CN for cranial nerve, GLD, GLND for glandular, bone, muscles, and so on. For the direction, now you use left, L for left, R for right, A for anterior, P for posterior, I for inferior, and so on. Consistent root structure is used for all substra substra uh, substrates. 
seminal vesicles and seminal vis dist versus seminal vesicle and seminal vis. So this is how we use it in the system, not like this. So we should be consistent. Camel case, a compound word where each word starts with a capital letter, as we said before, and there is no space between the words as the camel case. Only used when a structure name implies two concepts. But the concept do not appear as distinct category in common usage. Example, quada quina. You don't need to write it quada underscore quina. You write it like this because this is very common. Structures that are not used for those evaluation use Z at the prefix. Example, the optimization, the rings that we are using. Z optimization, BTV optimization. Let's say I'm, I'm making, uh, this is the BTV, the physician drone. I'm making two millimeters or three millimeters or five millimeters, whatever. Um, uh, optimization, optimization BTV around the physician uh, PTV. So I should put Z in the beginning just to discriminate it. This is something I created. It's not used for evaluation purposes. And uh, this is the uh, Excel sheet provided from the AAPM uh, TG263. Uh, supplement. So if you go to the website, you can easily download this Excel sheet. It contains 718 structures. It's much beyond that you need in your clinic for sure, but at least this can guide you. And I will show uh, in the, let's say, um, in the last part of the presentation, how you implement uh, TG263 in your clinic. And uh, also, there is uh, templates available in the uh, website of the AAPM, and this template contains of five uh, structures. You can download it and uh, use it as well. It's XML file. A recommendation for the target structure. So we finished the non-target, now we go for the target structures. It's a combination of ideas. There is no one single way. There's a lot of ideas there, and not all ideas should be used. So you should stick with one or two ideas and uh, implement them in your uh, clinic. And I will explain all the, let's say, the nine ideas available for the target uh, nomenclature. Could not come to consciousness to define a single standard for all cases and clinics. A numerous concept for target name, character string constraints, uh, guiding principle to specify where and how concept should appear if it is uh, presented uh, for the target name, designed to be used in order of importance. Not all ideas to be used. And you see, this is all the ideas, target, classifier, number, imaging, structure, dose, fractionation, probing, and custom. In the next few slides, I will explain this in detail, inshallah. So for the target, this is mandatory. This is from the ICRU. So the GTV, CTV, BTV, ITV, these should not be changed. So you should have GTV name, and you can use after it whatever you would like. But this one should be there. It's a must. IGTV, ICTV, PTV with exclamation mark. This is for low dose volume that exclude overlapping uh, high dose volumes. Uh, IGTV, internal target volume, gross uh, disease with margin motion. ICTV, it's internal clinical target volume with clinical disease with the margin for motion. Now we go for the next thing, which is the classifier. So we started with the target, now classifier. So the classifier, if needed, you can use N for nodal. So this is the terminology will be PTV, N, this is for nodal. GTV, P, this is for primary. Uh, CTV, SP, this is for the surgical bed. And so on. Okay, what if I need to use the dose? What if the dose is there? And numerical values are in centigrade. And this is how you should write it in your system. GTV underscore 5400 or CTV 5400 and so on. Text values define relative dose levels. And this is the preferred way that you use PTV underscore high. This you are talking about the high dose that you will be giving. Me, uh, medium dose and lower dose. What if you have more than three or four BTVs? You can use like this. BTV mid one, mid two, BTV high, and so on. So this now, this one contains of four BTVs. 
one, two, three, four PPTs. And you can use it with two digits. So mid plus two digits, zero, one, up to 10. So you can use up to maybe 15 or 16 BTBs in your uh, uh, contour. So this is the summary of the ideas. So we have the target, classifier, number, imaging, structure, those, ethics for the fraction, cropping, and custom. Example. So if you use only target name, so you'll use PTV, CTV, GDV. Excellent. That's it. If you would like to use the classifier as a second identity for your PTV or CTV, you could use PTVN, CTVP, SP, and so on. If you would like to use the number PTV N1, so the PTV number one, CTV number two, GTV, and so on, you can use like this. So this one include, included two things. The, uh, sorry, three things. The target itself, then the classifier, which is in blue, and then the number, which is in green. Okay, what if I would like to include the imaging naming in my PTV? Yes, you can use this. You can use PTV, P primary, number two, and then you can use the imaging with the number, CT1, PT1, and so on. If you would like to use the naming of the structure itself inside your BTV, so this is the BTV for the liver, the BTV for the kidney, the CTV for the uh, post-operative, uh, and so on. You can use this one. You can use it like this, PTV underscore liver, CTV underscore brain, GTV underscore uh, post-operative, and so on. What if I'd like to use the dose? This is what we said before. You use like this, high, mid, and you can use it, if you would like to use a, a numerical value, you sh it should be like this, in centigrade. What if I would like to include the fraction that this uh, liver will be treated with three fractions or five fractions or this brain or GT. You can use this also. You can use PTV underscore. This is the liver. Now I'm defining the structure. The structure I'm defining it here. And then this is the dose that I'm giving, 2,000. Multiply by three, which is the number of fractions. So three fractions, the brain and so on. A crobing, this one show, showing you how much you are crobing uh, from your BTV, either from the body, Let's say if, you, if your BTV is reaching the body, you can do this. BTV minus 0.3, so it means three millimeter cropped from the surface. Or you can use this one, CTV primary number two, cropped five millimeter from the surface or from the, let's say, barrier that you are using. What if I would like to use a custom uh, naming, as I mentioned before? Yes, you can use this one. BTV high, this sign, and the person who have this shaker we have here, or you have a resident working, you can use the same, CTV resident, or maybe this GTV drawn by the radiologist. You consulted the radiologist at your department, and he showed you how to draw this uh, type of GTV or BTV. You can use all, also the ter this terminology. And as I mentioned, not all of these ideas should be implemented because it will be very confusing, and for sure you will exceed the 16 characters that is limited by the system. Now, standardization for those volume histogram nomenclature. This is very important. Uh, some, maybe some of you will, will hear some terms for the first time, but it's, it's really very important. And I will, uh, inshallah, talk about it in details. So the guiding principle for this curve, DVH, this one is the low dose fraction of volume. And here is the high dose fraction of volume. So we have two regions, the low one and the high one. And the mean, everyone knows the mean. It's, it's uh, clear. Okay, what's the difference here? I'm using here something called CV and I'm using here something called DC. Where here I'm using only D and I'm using only V. So V for volume, we know, and D for dose, that's it. So this one, it's a clear, no, no issues. This one is a bit confusing. Why this C? C means cold or complement. So this area is cold because the dose here is less or the fraction of volume that I will be dealing with here is also small. So it's providing specificity on the exact what is measured. Input parameters, so this is what we are using. This is the input, input parameters. This is the input here. Anything before the brackets is the input. And anything after and between the brackets is the output. 
Format can be uh, parsed with regular expression operator, improves the ability for, uh, to use computer algorithms to automate calculation, the ability to, enter, uh, to incorporate re uh, biological metrics and units is important. So measurement is specified at the beginning of the string. As we said in the beginning, this is the input and this is the output. Units on the label, which are in, is measured in output in between brackets. Those either in gray or percentage, where uh, these reference uh, those prescribed to BTV high structure types. Volume either in CC or percentage, and they also for the volume of structure. You can use also the equivalent, uh, if I'm using, let's say, two gray per fraction, or maybe 2.5 gray per fraction, or five gray per fraction, this depends on you. So you can use this also, V20, AQD, two gray, and so on. So let's take this one, the low uh, dose fraction here. For example, for the liver, CV 10.5 gray in CC greater than 700 CC. So this is the volume of the liver getting 10.5 gray or less is greater than 700 CC. So it is the volume getting 10.5 gray or less is greater than 700 CC. So this is in this area. So C we said for it's mean cold or complement. So the volume 10.5, this is the gray. So how much those? And in brackets in CC, so this is my output. So my output here in CC. So this CC should match this one. I can use percentage. And if I use percentage here, the percentage should match here. Okay, let's take another example here in the high dose region. Example lung, V20 gray percentage less than 20%. So it means the volume getting 20 gray or more is less than 20%. I can use a relative value or I can use absolute value. Either both, they are fine. So I can use CC, I can use percentage. I can use even a gray if I would like to use the D. So the VX, volume or subvolume receiving greater than the dose. Those units or label are specified. Example, V20%, V20 gray, the output in percentage, V95%, the output in percentage, V20 gray, the output in CC. So this one goes where? In the high dose, here. So V in the high dose. DX, this one X is the value. So any value here comes. So V20, D95, so any X means any value you could use. So DX, minimum dose received by the hottest sub volume X. Volume units or label are specified. Example, D.1 CC in gray or D95% in percentage. So I need at least 95% of the volume to be covered by 95 of prescription dose. As we said, CV, X, volume or subvolume receiving less or equal dose X. Those units or label are specified. Example, CV 10.5, as we see in the previous example, CC, CV 95%, which is uh, in percentage. So this is a cold. So anything with C means cold, which comes in the low region. DCX, maximum dose received by the coolest subvolume X. Volume units or label are specified. Example, DC 0.1 CC in gray. Uh, DC 1% in percentage. Again, C means cold or complement. Calculation parameters are enclosed in parentheses in the front of the square brackets defining output units or label. And the laser pointer maybe is not working, yet, I think. Now it's okay. So, recommendation for distinguishing matrices of segmented versus non segmented type of structure. So, someone said, what's segmented and what not segmented? I will explain both sides. So, multiple BTV volumes. Uh, sorry, my computer. Okay. So, multiple BTV volumes treated to different dose levels should define if the lower dose BTV volumes excluded. So, if it is excluded, it is segmented. If it is included, it's not segmented. So, what does this mean? Okay, let's show you in this graph. So, this is the BTV high that we have in red. This one, 
is BTV low, not segmented, and this is BTV low, segmented. Okay, what do we mean? If, we, if let's say, uh, uh, the physician is treating, treating, let's say, this is an example, a low dose nodal volume may be treated to 5,000 centigrade BTV, while a boost volume within the nodal volume is treated to 7,000 centigrade. So this is the BTV high, and this is the BTV low, which is the seg uh, segmented one. The segmented one, it means it's treated alone. It's not included in the whole volume. This one is not segmented. It means it's there. That's why you can see this, this bulge of the curve here because this one is included in the dose of the big volume. Okay? So not included is segmented. Included, not segmented. Not segmented target structure were recommended. So the recommendation to use not segmented. I mean included in the BTV. So there is an overlap for the default standard for contouring. However, target structure nomenclature guidelines defines a means to identify segmented structure when they are preferred. So the preferred or the standard to use the what? To use the non-segmented. I mean included. Recommendation for vendors. I will not spend much time here. I will just uh, go through very fast because this is uh, for the vendors, it's not for us as a user, but just to have an idea. Vendors are critical here. DACOM RT is the standard for data communication across the random process. Do not restrict more than DACOM. So we are asking the vendors not to put more restrictions on the naming more than the DACOM. And uh, they should follow the FMA and SNOMED, and they should make the TG263 nomenclature available. Example, the administrator, uh, administration choice to restrict nomenclature to TG63 standard or, and local standard. So you can force the, your system to use only 263 standard and doesn't allow the user to use other uh, nomenclature. Or you can allow both the local standard and the TG263 standard. Attribute identifiers, example, linkage to the standardization dose, example, diagnosis, ICD-10, ICD-9, and so on. System should allow linkage to multiple structures. Uh, management of uh, image segmentation for adaptive radiotherapy and system should be enabled writable scripting. This is important because we'd like to create plans and uh, structures adhering the standardization. This is the very important uh, slides here. This is the recommendation for implementation. The most important thing that it should be gradual implementation. It will take you time to reach the TG263 standardization. It will not be done in one week. It needs really a lot of time. So allow time to develop an understanding of the guidelines, specific strings values, as we should, shown before, and incorporation to, uh, into their uh, documentation. Even basic efforts to change to standardization structure naming is beneficial for the individual clinic, as well as the Radiation Oncology Committee as a whole. Long-term process. It's a long-term process. Suggested workflow. This is exactly from the report. Identify common treatment sites. Example, prostate, breast, head and neck, and so on. Corresponding staffing members. And it's very important that all the staff members, they participate in this. Physician, dosimetrist, physicist, therapist, and so on. Detail communities already in use, what common language that you're using, what common things that you use to use in your department. This is very important that you, you have it. Download the full list as I shown the Excel sheet from the report, save the full list and make separate copy for editing. In that Excel sheet, delete rows from the spreadsheet containing structures that are not needed by your clinic. As I said, there's 718 uh, structures drawn and for sure in your clinic maybe you will not use maximum maybe it will be 150 M maybe it will not be more than this so the, 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 the rest you don't need them you just delete them this will eliminate a lot from uh, the, the excel sheet delete let's say for example delete all cranial nerve structures delete all individual heart vessels structures and so on discuss the final list among your department Guidelines for target and non-target structures and DVH matrices. Identify local documentation template 
that adjusted with the changes to the nomenclature. Example, simulation and treatment directives, checklist used in the plan review, etc. Review roadblocks in the contouring and TBS system. So you should do it like, like if you go, let's say, in the highway, you will see the police, they are blocking the road, exactly the same thing. You should do it in blocks. You finish something and then you go to the next. You finish something and you go to the next. You should not go all the way without you know, uh, establishing a well-defined procedure. Develop a plan or, uh, for gradual rollout of the nomenclature in the clinical practice. An example might be implement non-target structure nomenclature and DVH matrices by disease site. So you, let's say you can take brain or you can take the breast or you can take um, prostate and you define the list plus target, non-target and dosimetric values that we, we are using. White target uh, ranging for all disease site groups. Include all stakeholders, as we said, physician, dosimetrist, physicist, therapist, and so on. Consider where there are optimal breakpoint in your clinic process for checking that correct values are used. Example, include plan review, plan check, quality assurance, rounds to review structures and doses. This is very important. You need people to keep verifying that the information in your system are uh, 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 written correctly. It might be easier for clinics which are large enough, such that practices are broken into disease site, to implement non-target nomenclature first on site by site basis, and then later implement target nomenclature clinical uh, work. Develop a short list and create templates in your treatment planning system containing your new standard structure. So uh, there will be some, uh, one we call it global uh, structure set that contains all the structures that you are using in your department. You call it, let's say, template one, okay? And it has all the structures. It has the 100 structures or 150 structures that you are using in your system. Then from this 150 structures, you create the sub templates. It will be a template for a prostate, the only the organs that related to the prostate site, it should be there. Then you have the template for the brain. Only the uh, structure that related to brain will be there, and so on. So you have one which is the major one, and you have others that sub by site. As we said here, one template that contains all of your standard structures and individual template for each treatment site. Retain the full list of structures as a reference for adding new structures to your uh, templates as needed in the future. Now, this is a big question. What to use, gray or something gray? There are two schools, let's say. The OSA and Astro Working Group on prescription, they recommend to use something gray. So, huge people or huge clinics in the United States, North America even, they use the centigrade as bear also the astro recommendation. Europe and large institution in the USA, they use the gray. Both of them, correct. There is no one who is, let's say, wrong and this one is right. Both of them are fine. And the nice thing with this report that it ad adapts both. Either you are using gray or you are using centigrade. But the recommendation, not to use centigrade or gray in the nomenclature of the uh, st uh, target structure. The use of relative dose, example, PTV high, is recommended rather than using information in the target. Example, BTV 6,600 or BTV 66. And due to many factors. First of that, when, one of them, independent of the physical dose unit used as at various institutions. So, other institution will be using different dose values. So it's better to use the concept of this is a high dose, low dose, mid dose, and so on, rather than to use a specific value of that dose. Okay. What if the physician is treating a prostate and he prescribed 7,400 centigrade or 74 grays, and for certain reason he decided to reduce this one to 70 grays for certain complications of that patient? What you have to do now? You have to create a new structure because this is a new lecture and you should rename it to 70 gray now because you are not giving 74 anymore. So this one will be relieved if you have BTV high, that's it. It doesn't matter if, if it's 70, 74, 69, 68, because it's BTV high. So you don't need to play with the physical 
uh, content itself. So it's easily adaptable in case of prescription dose changes. And isometric data mining, relative dose names greatly improve the speed, accuracy, and composability of queries to extract needed information. This is very known in programming. If you are dealing with fixed names, rather than dealing with numbers, usually dealing with numbers will uh, consume a lot of uh, time for the system to grab the information. Maybe because your database is small, it's not uh, yet, uh, let's say, uh, clear for you, but once your database is huge and there's a lot of things inside it, it it's really <laughs> takes time for you to grab the information if there is a numerical value related to that. It's avoiding difficulties and error when, uh, which may occur when defining the relative dose levels uh, within each plan for the physical doses specified in the name. What does this mean? Let's say if I need to take, okay, what's the 50% of BTV 66? What is the 30% of BTV, whatever? Why? This will consume you. Okay, you just have to use the calculator. You have to calculate this. You don't need to do that. Okay, so this is my BTV high. I'm using 30% of my BTV high, 20% of my BTV high. It's easy, as easy as that. Benefits of implementation. Benefits right now. At this moment, it's a reviewing of your plans. It will show you your journey with your TBS. What have you done in the, in the let's say, previous times and what you are doing uh, currently. Building robust dose constraints review. Organ tracking report. It's easy for you to track any organ. It's easy for you to get all the information that you need from your system. As we said before, Radiation College Department, they have huge amount of data, but they are not organized. Scripting and quick plan. Uh, building. This will make it easy for the programming to grab the information and do the auto planning, uh, DVH analysis, and much, much more. For the future benefits, being able to compare your own data, you could also participate on uh, studies like R2EG protocols, studies, trials, and so on. It will be easy for you because you have standards. So the, you are here, let's say in Saudi Arabia, meeting the people who are dealing with the same terminology in the United States, in Canada, in Germany, and so on. Being able to compare multiple clinic uh, data, focused registries, anonymized vendor DICOM repositories, being able to compare large scale radiation ecology data uh, with other data sets. In summary, there is a substational knowledge and efficiency to be lost by not creating and using standardization as part of our daily clinical practice. Standardization lowers cost and increases the quality of data that can be automatically extracted. Treaty planning systems, radiation college information system, or health, uh, HES, electronic health record. TG263, nomenclature, any use in many centers, enabling creation of software, improving clinical process and learning. If you would like to share your data with some other centers, if you'd like to, to, to make a combined study between you and other centers, this is very important because both these two parties, they should speak the same language. They should have the same way of communication. Baves the way for future ontology development and in sharing with other ontologies too. You can easily expand your database based on uh, this. Okay, you have the standard, you have the rules, then you can build whatever you'd like. Make our black box bigger and more valuable to our patients. Our patients look for our TBS as a black box. What's this black box? It contains a huge amount of data and these data need to be grabbed adopted, extracted in the proper way that gives the benefit for us as, a, a, let's say, a clinics and also for our patients. And thank you very much. And I leave now the floor for any questions before we go for thank the you. quiz. Thank you very much, uh, Bilal. Uh, okay, I just have one thing, uh, Bilal, mm. I think you need to clarify. Mm. Go back to the slide where you talk about the uh, use of PTV high rather than uh, the dose. Because I think also the report uh, has some recommendations. Yes, so I think 
the report mm. also, could you comment, the report has some recommendations. If, for mm. example, you decided to use uh, the dose value with uh, mm. centigrade or mm. with, with grade, mm. it has specific instructions on that. Could you comment yes. on this? Yes, sure. If, if you would like to use the, let's say, uh, as Dr. Omid mentioned, the report allows you to use gray or centigrade in, in your uh, definition, but in the structure, you can type the dose like this, BTV 66 and so on. But in the, the way you get the information, uh, maybe I go back here to this slide, it will show better. Yes, this one. If you would like to extract the information, it should be written in gray. Okay, it should be written in gray. So you can do this in centigrade, but the way you, you say, you, you say V20 gray, not V2000 centigrade. I need the, the uh, let's say the percentage of that. No, you don't write V2000 uh, centigrade, you write V20 gray. But it's allowed for you to write the BTV or the uh, structure, sorry, uh, the, um, uh, target to n uh, centigrades, but extraction the data, the uh, identification should be in grades. Just I want to add something. Uh, yes. that. The report also mentions, like on the PTV or CTV, if you mm. you decide to actually add the prescription, mm. they say that you should use a centigrade. That's their preferences. Yes. And for example, in your in your in your example, PTV underscore six six zero zero. Yes. That is understood. You, you don't need to add the unit. Yes. But if you are going to use the gray, if you decide exactly. to use 66 as gray, yes. they say you have to use, uh, put the, the GY for the gray. GY, yes, exactly. Name. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely so so this is yeah. uh, 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 something that I report, I mean, uh, uh, I, I liked even the details how the, this report went. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, Bill, uh, so we look at uh, Iqbal. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you can ask the yes, question. Uh, thank you, Bilal. That was really useful. I have something to share, and I have mm. a question. Mm. Uh, you mentioned that uh, it's better to create like structure set for each site, like if you have prostate structure set uh, for prostate and for breast. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, what I see, what I've seen in my clinic, like we have. Each doctor, they create their own structure set. So instead mm -hmm. of having a structure set for a site, we have a structure set for a doctor. So I will see in the template, structure set with Dr. A and then structure that with Dr. B and so on. Mm -hmm. So in um, my opinion, I think, um, is there is any way to convince doctors to have <laughs> like, like one language? Okay. And, sure. and, and also, um, I have a question. Mm. Uh, so sometimes doctors will ask, um, they will contour two PTVs. Let's say they have PTV 70 gray and they have PTV 66 gray. And they want to have two plans with those PTVs and then they will decide which one they will go ahead with the treatment. So is it, which, which, which one is a good practice? Is to have both PTVs in same structure set or different structure set? Okay. For the, the, first, the first one that each doctor have uh, his own structures, and you said doctor structures. Uh, this is what we faced in our department actually. And then we told them what structures you need, we'll create it for you. So we, we created all types of structures that the physician would like to see, let's say in the breast case or in the prostate case, and we make it as a template. And we don't give them the privilege to create any more uh, structure sets. So it's only, uh, let's say the admin who have the control in this and mm -hmm. Sorry? That is good, actually. Yeah. And then uh, we showed them, okay, whatever you would like, we can adopt in the system. But we need to extract data. And I showed them, okay, if you need to write your own structures, then it will be done. Uh, there is no script for your uh, structure set. I cannot extract all this information. So when you tell him or tell her uh, there is no script, it means you have to do it like manual basis. You have to open the DVH grab each information for that structure, it will take him maybe, let's say, 30 minutes or maybe one hour to extract the information of the data, and then the, it will not be reported. Each physician, they, they like to see their plans passing all the criteria when we do the plan review. So if you enable them to see their, the script running and their uh, structures are there, 
with all constraints, they will be happy because everyone will be looking at his plan. He did the amazing thing and uh, everything is fine. But if you give him the freedom, he will draw his own structures. That's fine. No scripting. Uh, plan review, you have to uh, open your, maybe your uh, written hand paper and you should tell the people uh, who's uh, listening to you what the um, structure, what that structure, how much those are you achieving or not. This one will reduce, uh, let's, I think this way maybe it could convince them uh, to have one uh, common uh, structure set. The second question you are saying that you have uh, BTV 70 gray and BTV uh, 66, right? Or 60 gray? Yes, whatever. Like you have two PTVs and yes. the doctor have two plans with those PTVs, then they will decide which one they will to, uh, decide to go for treatment. So should we contour, or they usually they will contour in the same structure set. Should we contour? Yeah, yeah they, can, they can be contoured in the same structure set, but as I told you, they, and even it's recommended by the very board, they don't use uh, PTV with certain dose. They use it as high, mid, and so on. So you could use BTV high, regardless whatever the dose. And you show the physician that plan. If he's happy, no issues. If he's not, you can decrease the number of fractions. So plan with the highest number of uh, the, the highest dose, let's say 70 gray and 35 fractions. Yes. He's not happy about, um, let's say, the uh, dose for the organ tusks. Then, okay, you can go for 30 gray, uh, 30 fractions instead of 35. So you are not losing the optimization. So you just omit five fractions from the optimization and that's it. You don't need to optimize. It became now uh, 60 gray instead of 70 gray. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Bilal. Do you usually, do you usually uh, leave uh, contours that are not used in the plan? For example, in your case, a PTV 70 and uh, 74 and another one 66, but then they decided just to treat the 66 volume. Do you still keep the 74 gray no. plan? No. The I, I, even I would ask you to delete from the prescription sheet. We'll keep the one which they choose at the end. Mm -hmm. The one which approved, that one will keep. The other thing will delete it. Okay. 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 So, Dr. Shaker, do you have any questions? Uh, you should have a question. <laughs> Your <laughs> name was in the presentation. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. But, uh, Irfa, just, uh, it's not clear. Uh, actually, it's not a question. It is just uh, a comment. Uh, is that uh, in, order, in order to make this project successful, um, cooperation between uh, physicists, dosimetrists, and uh, physicians and radiation oncologists is mandatory. And uh, to make this solid, um, we have to create, as I, I, as I, the note that I have written, we have to make uh, a fixed uh, we have to create fixed uh, templates in um, compilation with the task uh, group uh, recommendation. Uh, doing this will make our scripts easier to be done, will make um, uh, nomenclature more uh, universally uh, compatible with the international standards. So it's just a matter of cooperation, and which, I, which I guess is the mandatory uh, part of a successful department in, uh, everywhere. So creation of fixed templates uh, is the um, uh, is the gold key to make this project successful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for your comment. Uh, you want to comment on that, Bilal? No. Uh, that, that's fine. No, no. He's already mentioned the question. Okay. Yeah. Anyone has any other questions? Because Bilal has prepared the quiz, so I'm warning you. <laughs> you better <laughs> ask him the questions before he asks you. <laughs> I have 10 questions. <laughs> yeah. One thing I would really love to see, uh, uh, yeah. I don't know, just a raise of hand, who actually has implemented this report in their clinic? Anyone has implemented it? Uh, so prob probably, probably it's, it's just really not a lot of clinics, uh, at least in our region, has implemented this report. Yeah, I, I know, I know then, some in the... US, they already started the TG263. Yeah. Some of them in Europe yeah. also. UK, some already started the yeah. this because the report released in 2018. I know two clinics yeah. personally that they already became fully 263 uh, adoption. 
it would be nice, you know, to see to like if after a year we gather again mm -hmm. and uh, to hear from ex uh, exp uh, people uh, their experience about how they manage to either fully implement the report or partially implement the report, what sort of difficulties they face, and so on and so on. We have not yet uh, started this in our uh, department uh, clinic, yes. but uh, probably in a few months, uh, this might be a pro an interesting project for you, Bilal. You're very keen yeah. To, yeah. Uh, to do this for sure. Yeah. Okay. I, I would like also to mention that there are some departments who take this, took this also in the further step. They start even to standardize the name of the planning, the name of the course, the name of the QA, the name of the structure set itself. Because now if you create a structure set for a prostate, there's terminology for that structure set. The naming of the uh, fusion imaging, uh, imaging, let's say what, whatever modality that you have, PET or MRI or uh, another CT, post-op or whatever, they also implemented this. So they have standardized the way that even the name of the fields. So even the, we have this in our in department. We have a standard naming for the fields, the standard name of the planning and so on. But there are centers there, yeah, it's kind of, they put a protocol. If you, this is a VMAT plan, this is how you name it. If this is an IMRT, this is how you name it. If this is a 3D conformal, this is how we name it. Electron and so on. And this is really a, a very brilliant way that you make standardization for everything from A to Z, from the course that you create up to the, you, the patient finish uh, the treatment. Okay. Uh, so last chance for any, okay. Any questions? Last chance. Musab, do you have a question? Okay. In that case, uh, Bilal, it's all, we are all yours. Okay, I will uh, take myself from being a host uh, so that I can actually uh, uh, do this uh, exam. Okay. Okay. Bilal, maybe take me out from co-hosting. So remove co-host from me. Okay. 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 So uh, I hope that you will hear the my screen. Please uh, raise your hand if you hear the sound in my screen. <laughs> Okay. So I'm making it like uh, win the million uh, platform. So this is the DG263 uh, quiz. Okay, let's start. Okay. For brain tumor case, Mahmoud would like to have planning organ at risk volume for optic chiasm with five millimeter expansion. What will be the correct terminology? And I will put the polling. And I need you please to participate in the polling. We have 47% uh, of you selected B, which is good that <laughs> at least 50% of you knows the answer. Okay. Benal, is this yes. a typo C and D? C and D, there is no difference between, or is there a difference? Oh, it's the capitalization. Okay, no, there is. No. There is. <laughs> yeah, the, the, okay. capi the capitalization, yes. yes. Exactly. Okay. okay, so yeah, okay. you selected B. Exactly. So as per the recommendation for non-target structures, you have to use the camel case. 
a compound, uh, compound word where each word starts with a capital letter and there is no space between words as camel case. So the correct one is B. Okay, let's go further. <laughs> Okay, during a CT scan session for head and neck case, Mus'ab decided to do the contouring for the combined lungs. What would be the correct terminology? So we have 43% uh, selected C and 36% selected A, 21% selected B. And I'm disappointed because <laughs> it should be the other way. Anyways, so the correct answer is A. As per the recommendation for non-target structures, since this is a partial organ, this is head and neck, right? And this is the lungs. So you, are, you don't have the complete lungs drawn in your uh, CT. So it's not complete. It's partial structures are designated by after the root. Example, brain. Is it clear? Okay. Is it clear? Any question about this? Or the, the, uh, the answer is clear for you, please? Clear, clear. Okay. Relaunch, yes. Let's go more. Okay, Iqbal would like to preserve the combined structure of the left and right hippocampus by adding a planning organ at risk volume with 10 millimeter expansion. What sh uh, she should choose? the results. So we have 56% of you selected D, 22% selected C, 17% selected B, and 6% selected A. The correct answer is D. Why? As per the recommendation for non-target structure compound st uh, structures and are identi identified using the plural, i.e. the name ends with an S or an I is an appropriate for the root structure name. Example, lungs, kidneys, hippocampi, lymph nodes, and so on. So we have hippocampi, the PRV, this is the bank risk volume, and this is the 10, which is in millimeters. So this one is the correct. This one is not allowed, and we said the and is not. So it eliminates these. So this one is the one. And this one for sure is more than 16 characters. So it ends you with the D. Okay. For a prostate case, Faisal would like to use three dose levels for BTVs. 70, 20 centigrade, 
five seven twenty centigrade and four six eight zero centigrade. What is the most appropriate terminology for PTV's naming? and share results so we have which is good 74% of you choose C which is the correct one we said it's recommended not to use uh, numerical values so one two they go out and usually we use an underscore so this one is C <laughs> The use of relative dose, example PTV high, is recommended rather than using dose information in the target, example PTV 6600 or PTV 66, due to independent of physical, physical dose unit used at various institutions, easily adaptable in case of prescription dose changes. Excellent. Okay. For a palliative brain tumor case, Hanouf would like to draw the left lacrimal gland. She consulted you asking for the correct terminology. What would you advise her? So we have 35% uh, of you choose C and D. You were there, but we mentioned something about this. We don't use the full name for the gland, right? So it should be C. As per the recommendation for non-target structures, standard category roots are used for structures distributed throughout the body, G, L, and D for glandular structure, example, gland, submandibular, and so on. Okay, let's move on. Ismail would like to draw the left optic nerve for a GBM case. What do you think the appropriate naming would be? Concentrate, please. Okay, I'll end 
the polling and share the results. So we have 41% of you selected A, 29% select B, 12% select C, and 18% select D. It's almost, almost the same as the previous one. So it should be D. As per protocols guidelines, a special categorization for the primary name and always located at the end of the string, following underscore character example, lung, and we have the optic nerve PRV03. So it should be optic in RV for nerve. It's exactly as GLND for gland. Exactly the same. Okay. Question seven. Mashaal is working on a complex head and neck case. She needs to remove the hot spot from the region, from the right optic nerve by adding a planning organ at risk volume with three millimeter expansion. She's confused about the correct terminology. What would you suggest? Okay, just five seconds and then we'll end the polling. Okay, let's end the polling and share the results. So we have 69% of you choose A, which is not the correct answer, unfortunately. And we have 19% who choose D, which is the correct answer. So we said, I just explained this in the previous example, so it should be clear for you. It was there, you see, optic nerve, PRV, and then you have the literal, which is left, right, and so on. So it was there in the previous example. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, a boost breast case being assigned to Bassam. He's using a VMAT for treatment planning. He would like to decrease the spillage of the dose outside the target by using a ring. What terminology he can use? Sure, the results. So we have around 69% who choose A, which is the correct answer, and we will know why. We said 
As per protocol recommendations, structures that are not used for those evaluation use Z at the prefix. Example, optimization structures, high dose Lee level regions and ring. And this is the one. Ring BTV boost should choose Z at the beginning. Okay. So Wamid is working on a palliative spinal cord case. A guidance structure needs to be drawn to determine the upper and lower jaws of the field. What do you think the correct terminology would be? So we have B and C, more or less 47%. And it should be B. Why? We will know. As per the recommendations, custom qualifier string at the end, which could catch anything abnormal. This is guidance, right? It's not a structure that we use in, let's say, uh, um, and, and I use it in my system, but maybe someone else is, is, is used differently. So this is something I created. So it's a custom based. Any custom based, you should use this sign. Okay. Now we go for the next question. I have a question. Sure. Yes, sir. Okay. The, the exclamation mark, is it an allowed character or not? Yeah, it's allowed for the BTV. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's allowed. But not all systems, uh, they do support this. Eclipse, Monaco, I think they support, but other systems, I'm not sure. But I mean, for, with the, the report? A, a, a report, yes, they recommend use this one for the BTV high. Okay, so relaunch, yes. This is the question number 10, last question. Can you help Lukman by defining point one and two correspondence for the given illustration graph? I need point one and point two, what they are. Remember the C, we said something about the C. If you know what's the C, you will solve it directly. I mean this C. Okay, in the pulling. And share results. So we have 46% of you got it right. And this is the answer. As we said, the nomenclature for the low dose, uh, let me put the laser. Yes, nomenclature for the low dose fraction, which is here. So this one should have C there, C for co cool, Cold or co uh, complement, we said. So CV and D, DC. So where's this? It's here. And the VX and DX, they are in the high region. So the correct answer is B. 
So point one represents the low dose fraction of volume and point two represents the high dose fraction of uh, volume. Thank you very much for participating with the quiz. Uh, we got 70% pass, which is, I'm uh, happy with this. Any more questions? Before we conclude. Uh, yes, Daniel, you can speak. If you have uh, any question, yeah. Uh, well, well uh, thank you, first of all, for your presentation. And secondly, I would like a question about a uh, number of structures in templates. Uh, you have mentioned about decision implemented in your department on that topic. Is it a time-saving decision to prevent doctors from creating their own structures? Uh, for example, some of the hand and neck cases require estimation of those on constrictors, for example, but it is just uh, a small number of cases. But uh, in this case of uh, preventing doctors creating their own structures, physicists are obliged to create it in advance for all the cases. Yeah. So uh, is it time saving uh, in overall of your experience? Yes. For our experience, as I said before, uh, in the beginning we have each physician he have his own structures, which was really time consuming for every one of us. Because let's say if I took a plan of Dr. X and I start to work on it, and he said, no, this is not my structures. I, I need to have this and this and this drawn. Why you not include them? So you start to be confused. You don't know which, which physician you have to follow. So what we did in our department, we said, okay, we said with the physicians, let's say for the breast cases, what type of structures you would like to be there? They discuss among, among each other and we agreed on certain templates of structure set. Then we created this in our system. And then we went for the prostate, for the rectum, for the, let's say, uh, uh, pelvic region and so on. So this relief us from uh, first thing, confusion, because today I'm not in the clinic, my colleague is covering me. He should be able to, to uh, continue the work. He should not start from zero. He should know exactly what he's, he's dealing with. Uh, let's say tomorrow Dr. X left and Dr. Y came and he's, uh, let's say, following up his case. He should know uh, that this is our, uh, way of uh, structure naming this is our sorry our way of the structure template that we have and this is what we are dealing with and as i said also it relieves us because we have we cannot create uh, scripts for each physician because you will have endless number of uh, scripts i mean scripts that grab the dvh and make the analysis and giving you which organ is passing the constraints and which organ is failing and also the uh, target structures if you do this, then you will have maybe 100, 200 uh, uh, scripts, which doesn't make any sense. But if you make, cust uh, let's say, standard one, everyone will follow. It, it will relieve you from a lot of pain. Oh, so, well, it allows to reduce number of templates uh, exactly. from 200, for example, to 20. <laughs> yes. Okay, it's just thank you. Yeah, it's still, it's still much. I mean, it's still much. For me, I believe that for each site, you should have a template. You should not have uh, for each site more than one template. And your phys physician, your department, they should agree in what type of templates because this is very important in the evaluation. If you make it open, then each physician will bring his own uh, constraints. You will say, okay, I need this constraint and that Dr. X will need constraints differently from Dr. Y, from Dr. Z, and from Dr. H. So everyone will have, you know, different constraints. Then which one you will follow? Which one you will use in your department? And this is what we suffered from the beginning. Then we put we, uh, standard for the constraints that we have according to the protocols. Okay, what's the reference? We have the Quantac, we have the R2EG protocols, and so on. So we put for each constraint the uh, 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 the protocol that we are using for and everybody is following this otherwise it will be really a nightmare for you to to follow up which constraints you have to uh, validate for each plan because i'm working in the plan i pass all the criteria for the r2g protocol 
And then Dr. X came and he said, no, I don't need this. I need you to lower this. But this is not achievable. Sometimes the phys physician, they think that you are doing magic in your TBS. It's not the magic. There is common of sense. If your uh, <coughs> target is encompassing or uh, overlapping with, let's say, 70% of that organ uh, very important, let's say the brain stem or the optic chiasm, how can you achieve 95% coverage of your uh, PTV in that region? You cannot, whatever you did. You cannot ask the radiation to come here or stop, please go somewhere else. You cannot do this. You can kind of try to accommodate the dose in a certain place, but you, you cannot make it 100% at that area, like a cutoff. After that, I, cannot do, I, I don't have a radiation. That's why we have a gradient, uh, uh, the gra gradient for the dose decay. We cannot have only one, uh, one cutoff value. Mm -hmm. All in all, it's our own responsibility to create, to establish some protocols yes. which we will follow in our department. Yeah. This should be done among a, a committee from your department, let's say, the physician sit with the physicist, with the, whatever the, the proper person, with the administration maybe, and they agree in a certain template, and they discuss it among, among them. And they agree to follow, let's say, uh, R2EG protocol number 005. So all uh, cases related to that site should be within R2EG protocol, that number. It will be easy for everybody to follow up and easy for you to, to get the data from your TBS. Yep. Uh, Bilal, I have a comment on this point. Yes, sure. Can I comment? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, go ahead. Okay, uh, so, I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't have a problem if uh, each physician has their own template because sometimes they want to include certain organs and if we include, we had a, a single template that, that uh, has many, many of these organs, they would just confuse them. So even if they wanted to have their own template, Personally, I don't have a problem, but they have to be consistent in the naming. This is the problem we face. Mm -hmm. So we cannot have, for example, one physician to call uh, a certain organ a name and another physician to call another, uh, the same organ a different name. Even if they wanted to have their own templates, uh, uh, although that's not the best way, but even if they insisted, then the naming has to be consistent. And I think this is the main objective of this protocol as to the naming, how you should name the structures. Because if you're going to have scripts, that is going to be a problem if they're not consistent in the name. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, Ganga Berth, if, if, Ganga Berth, if you have a question, please just speak it out. Yeah, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for such a wonderful and nice informative talk. I have one query regarding the this, uh, the templates which has been provided by the WAPM2 TG263 report, mm -hmm. can we utilize these template in the Monaco or is there any way to convert this template into the Monaco TPS? Yeah, yeah the templates they are in XML file and I think they yeah. are easily imported in Monaco if I'm not mistaken because for us in TB, in, uh, we are using Eclipse and it's easy. I just copy them to the root and then make them a template, that's it. Uh, I'm gone. I, I think it's the same because it's XML. XML is worldwide using uh, format. So I think Monaco can communicate easily with XML file. I'm, I don't have that much experience. Maybe if Lukman had experience in the uh, Monaco, he could elaborate more on this. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Any more questions? Mahmoud, you have a question? Or Joseph, if you have a question. Just to keep it right. <laughs> Just to keep them. Uh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Fishel. Okay, Daniel, go ahead. Okay. Are we done? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. So I think we are done, uh, Bilal. Uh, we're going to uh, wait for the, the recording to you know, become an, uh, a file, and then we will uh, probably publish it somewhere. And uh, then we can share the link with uh, all of you. You can share it with those who did not attend. Uh, 
uh, but don't give them the answers for the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> I, ho I hope I hope you like the quiz. I, I tried no, my it's, best it's, to make it uh, clear and uh, simple. <laughs> no, it, it's it's challenging. Although sometimes, you know, honestly, uh, I prefer a naming in a certain way, but. Mm. We still, this is a protocol. We, it has nothing to do with my preference. It's just exactly. what they, they uh, state and we should just follow it. And sure. that, that's the end of the story. Yeah. So some of the questions I got right because I put the uh, right before of the PRV, you know, for example. Yeah, yeah. But, um, fine, okay, that's how they, we should name it. We just yes. follow it, end of story. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you everybody for joining and uh, I hope you will take it from here to start adopting this uh, protocol in, in your departments.